Right, so a bit of a short video for you today. Um, just gonna do the clips behind here. So these leak from factory. Um, basically we're gonna pull them all off, clean everything up, and put some sealant on them. So yeah, I'll bring you along for the ride. Uh, show you what I did. I'm gonna try to do it with no tools. I've actually just done the other side, so. Uh, you know what I'm doing a little bit more now, so I'll chuck you on a tripod and yeah, we'll go through the process. <coughs> Right, so we're going to pull these off, um, you can use a tool and leave them out, so there's two pins here, it needs to slide back, so I'll open the door slightly, I'm going to grab the front, and we're going to pull it off, and we're going to work our way around with our fingers. Yeah, it's popping all those clips off. The reason I'm not using any tools is because then you'll dent, much more likely to dent the body of the van. So once we get it to this point, one more clip, that clip there, then you gotta open it up and this whole thing needs to slide back, it pops off. And that's one down. And then we get this guy. So yeah, pretty simple, um, just need to go along, popping them all off. I'm not sure if this, I haven't done the sliding door yet, so I'm not sure if this guy has these ones, or just pops off. But going off how the rest of the van's been, if it has them, it's going to be at the back. So I'll just see if the pop front pops off for us. I might need to open the door slightly. Can just see what I can see? Right, so uh, at this point I didn't know this, but there's actually a clip at both ends of this side. Yeah, so it looks like it has those big clips at the front. Later on you'll see me end up having to undo these screws to get this part back on, so there's little screws on the back side. I'll talk about it later, but... Uh, I'll looks like we might not have them. Or a stair can start. Yeah, just don't do what I did here. Didn't quite get this right. It worked, but... There's definitely an easier way, just undo the two screws that hold those end clips on and go from there. Yep, so that's just normal clips. So we can get that just by hand and we'll walk our way along and pop those all off. Feels like you're going to break them. I will say it feels like you're going to break them, um, but so far I've only broken one clip and I managed to fix that and put it back on. So let's see if we can keep that up. As you can see, a broke one, but I've grafted a new peg on. Um, bit of a mess up, but hopefully that should hold. I just used another clip that I did have, stole a peg off it, and melted it all together, so that should hold it. Yes, yeah, so it doesn't look like there's any clips on that side either, so now we'll snag our hand up here and pop the top off. Yeah. As you can see, struggle a little bit there, we can get it. Without trim removals. Right, so yeah, we do have one of those clips at the back, so now they're all popped off. We need to slide this and off that one. This guy here has two of those things there as well. It just has one top. So just one guy up there. And same with this one. One guy up there. here he's got four as well four arms so he's on there pretty well but you can pop them off and the door. open the door and get these two Right, 
Right, so there you go. We've got that whole side all off. Um, as you can see, it's pretty grubby and dirty under here. So now I'm going to be cleaning this all up. And But first, I'm going to pull all these clips off. So I'll show you how we do that. Right, so to pull these clips off, we're going to need a nylon spudger, or you could use a flathead screwdriver. Um, I'm using a nylon spudger because I don't want to scratch the paint any more than necessary. And a pair of pliers. Yeah, so we'll start on this guy here where you can see him. So I'm going to grab this, I'm going to pull him out, not fully, and I'm going to slide at the top. Pop the little tab in there, and then it's the same at the bottom. I'm going to do the same, feel around, feel that tab, and push him up. And pull it out, so that's what it looks like. So what we're doing, if you'll focus, we're just trying to push these two little tabs, push them in, and then pop it out. So, grab this guy. Pull them out slightly, slide this prying tool in underneath and pop those two little tabs. Basically all we're doing is pushing them in and popping it out. So we can just go ahead, pull, pop, pop. So yeah, I'll just run along, pop all these guys out the whole way along. The same techniques that I showed you all the way along. Just gonna pop them all out. Pretty easy once you get the technique down. I've done a few of these now, so kind of know what I'm doing. Yeah, I'll just get that done and then I'll catch you up once I've done that. A little thing to note these four tabs at the front are orientated in a different direction than the rest of them. So you can just see all these ones here are vertical, they run up straight up and down. That's the way we're going to put them back in. But these four guys here. They're on like a 45 degree angle, so as you can see, these guys here, 45 degrees, compared to these guys, are all straight up and down. So just need to remember that when we're putting them back on. Right, so next thing we need to do is any that get left in here, um, we need to pull those out as well. So best way I've found to do this is chuck you a bit of trim on a piece of cardboard or something. Uh, I've got these angled, um, well, long nose pliers and a straight pair. So basically just reach in here and there's two clips. So these two little clips here We need to squish those guys in Hope you can see that squish those guys in so it can pop out or we can just squish one in and then pull it out and like Rock it out. So basically it's just a little bit of finagling, but you should be able to get these out So just get any that get left in here get your pliers up under there and kind of wiggle them out work on them a little bit and see we've got one out there so now we should just be able to pop it out just like that so as you can see got that guy out without damaging him and now we can clean all those up and we'll get them all nice and clean and then we're ready on just to clean the van so I'll clean the rest of these guys up and catch up with you right so the next thing I'll see we need to do is we need to clean up the van so I'm going to chuck you guys on the tripod and just do that quickly, so basically all we really need to do here is clean up around the holes, but because, well, look at it, we've got them all off, so we might as well clean it nicely, get anything out that's going to be abrading the paint and making rust more likely. Um, ignore my very beaten up passenger door, I need to get around to fixing that properly one day, but uh, it's not going to happen for a while. So yeah, I'll chuck you guys on the tripod and we'll clean it up. I'm going to use a couple things to do that. To start with, I'm going to use my drill brush, which is just a modified scrubbing brush. Um, so we'll use that and just scrub all that stuff off with a bit of water. Then we'll come back with a cloth and a microfiber, clean it, get it all nice and clean and no, no debris on there. And then, yeah, um, basically at that point, then we can put all the clips back in and seal them in. A little bit of water is going to get in those holes, so if you've got an interior in there, I don't have mine in fully yet, so I don't care about it, but um, if you've got an interior in there, just be mindful of that. Drill brush needs a bit of a tightening up, so I'll just sort that quickly. Basically, my bolts come undone.
Yeah, so next step, gonna be checking for uh, any rust or wear on the paint that's gonna cause an issue down the road. So on mine, as I was saying earlier, my door's been pretty messed up. I think it's actually fallen off in the previous, um, the previous owner, so thanks NZ Post. Um, and it's been bashed back together pretty rough, so I'm gonna need to fix it better, but for right now, I just wanna keep it limping along for a little bit longer, so. As you can see, we've got a bit of bare metal there where that crease has cracked the paint. We've actually got a little bit of rust just here, so I'm gonna kind of tidy that up a little bit, chuck some rust converter on that, and also I pushed this grommet in while I was cleaning. So it looks like this, so yeah, I'll fish that out of there. Luckily, um, as I was saying, there's a gas right there, so the gas filler pipe actually runs down through here, and I can pull that grommet off underneath. Um, that comes out of and get my hand up in there so I could rescue that guy. Right, so it's locked down. I'm out of masking tape, I'm out of red paint, um, but I have zinc primer and a little bit of black paint, so this is going to get just zinc primed. I'm going to wire brush it back, throw some rust killer on it, zinc primer, and call that good for now. Um, as I said, I'm going to pull this back off at one point and fix this door. So, so just to go at least. Don't be dumb. Only got one set of eyes. Right, so pretty crap job, but that's uh, gonna get it, stop it from getting worse until I can deal with this door properly. So pull some tape off, let that dry, and we'll start progressing on the next bit. Right, so in the meantime, I've got all these clips clean. I've actually cleaned all the panels as well. I'm going to use some of this stuff on those. Um, so, so bad angles, but I'm um, gonna use some of this stuff. So it's just a plastic dash and trim protector and reviver. Um, so throw some of that on them. Um, and then we'll let that soak in while we throw the clips back on the van. We're gonna pull these trim clips back in. We're gonna seal them in. I'm just using an auto seam sealer. Um, probably not the best product for it. It gets a bit too hard. Probably wanna use a Sicker Flex or something like that that stays a bit softer. Um, but as I keep saying, we're in lockdown and I have this. <laughs> don't have anything else. Well, I've got some silicon. Don't really wanna use silicon because it could promote some corrosion issues. So, yeah. We're going to try this. Worst comes to worst. I'm not happy with it. I'll pull them off and redo them. Right, so this is the whole reason we're doing this whole deal is to get some sealant in behind the clips and stop them leaking. So basically I'm going to take each clip, run a bit of sealant right around it. A um, bit less than that, but as you can see, sealant just run right around it. And then we're going to put it in making sure it's clipped on and pointing up vertically. It's a little bit of this, this sealant slash uh, seam sealer just right around the clip and then we'll throw those in. And while we're here, Remember what I said about these four at the front? We need to remember they go on a 45 degree angle when we put them back in. So while I remember that, I'm going to put those ones in. So all we're doing, taking this sealant and just, sorry this is 
Just dabbing it around the edge. Getting a nice full full circle around that and then clipping it in and making sure it's straight up and down. So, while I finish this up, let's have a quick little chat. Um, basically, my van does leak a little bit of water through these, but nothing significant. Um, in New Zealand here, we've got, we get a bit of rain, so, especially up in Auckland where I'm living currently, I'm doing this, so, I'm basically just doing this as preventative maintenance. As you guys will probably know, knowing sprint events, their paint's not the best. Um, it's one sad thing about these Mercedes. For some reason, Mercedes decided not to paint them very well. They've got quite a thin coat of paint and quite often you'll see rust starting all over them. Um, mine's had a few rust issues. I've mostly sorted those now and I don't want them to come back. So, you know when you see vans, like the rust line streaming out from these mid belts, that's from not just these, but also these trims being loose. And, and you know where I fixed that rust just before? Well, treated that rust with a bit of primer from the trim rattling against it. That's wearing through the paint there. And that's what ends up starting to get that rust start to starting. And then that will streak down the side of the panel and make the van look pretty crap. So. I think for a couple of hours effort, this is worth it, um, each to their own, but yeah, basically this is my slightly modified version of how to do it, so hope you enjoy uh, following along. For more information on it, there is different clips you can get with seals in them from the newer vans and tr little trim trims you can put in to stop this. Uh, just, just to stop, try stop water getting into this area completely. Um, so that has all options. Your best bet to learn about that would be to jump onto the Sprinter forum. Uh, if you don't know what that is, look up Sprinter Source on Google, and you'll be amazed by how much great information there is out there on these vans. Most of the guys posting on there in the states, but that's all good. It's the same van, just. Right hand drive versus left hand drive. And I'm one short, so I've lost one. There it is. You want to be sure not to lose these um, as you're doing it. You can get new ones. They're a dollar or so from the Mercedes dealership. Um, the newer vans, 2019 and up, so the uh, VS30s. This is an NCV3. Um, they have slightly upgraded clips so Mercedes has recognized this problem and they've actually made new clips. Uh, the new ones have a little rubber seal in them to try stop this issue from happening. So you can buy those and they do fit the NCV3. Um, so that's this model of Sprinter which has this issue. However there's quite a few of these clips and a dollar a piece it's suddenly probably upwards of a hundred bucks by the time you get it all, all said and done. So in my mind, this is a pretty good solution and does the job. So that's what I went with. Yeah. Um, next step now, I am going to, while these are still slightly wet, 
I'm going to clip the trims on because I just want to do that now while they're slightly wet. So if they move at all, that sealant moves with them because it's not as very flexible. I want it to set in the right spot. So whether they need to pull out or whatever happens, hopefully that can move still somewhat. So I'm going to leave you guys there and just quickly clip these trims back on. So clip and mons, basically a lot simpler than getting them off. Just need to rainbow out these tabs. So you got to go forward slightly and just wiggle it back across so that hooks on first and then line all those clips up and then just press it in and just make sure you know where all the clips are you just put them in so make sure they're all clipped in and then we'll do the next one same with this one we want to be hooking that guy on pulling it forward wiggle it around get those clips all lined up All right, so I've run into a bit of an issue. I didn't have this on the other side. Um, these little hook things are actually screwed on and I've just figured out. So there's this little screw on the back side here. And because this one's got one on both ends, we can't actually get this back on. So I'm gonna have to undo one of these so I can clip them back on. I was trying to avoid um, using, having to use torques on this so you guys could follow along without them. But as you probably know of these vans, You'll need a T25 if you really want to do much on them, so yeah, I'll bring you guys along. Basically, I just need to pull this guy off. There's a T25 on the back side of it. Sorry, I'm wrong. There's a T20 on the back side of it. I'm actually going to pull the other one off too because it's causing a bit of an issue. But why I'm pulling this one off is just hooking that these clips just can't quite get the right angle in it um, to get this on in the right spot without pulling that off. So I'm going to pull that off, clip those guys into their little homes first off the van so they're in place, and then we're just going to line everything up. What I did do is I messed these guys up when I was messing around with that, so we'll spin those guys back up vertical and then we'll clip this guy back on. should line up and I can drop that bolt and basically we can just get these screws done back up so a bit of a difference from the other side but nothing too bad one was a bit of an annoying one to do because I was trying to put those clips in vertically but if you have them on the 45 just click straight on so yeah remember that um, we could take this one out but as I said we can kind of do it without doing that and just by hooking these boys on
So yeah, that's the uh, last bit here. I'll make sure I don't put it on upside down. But putting them on, line them up. A little bit of finesse required. You kind of line the bottom ones up like that. Pop it off, clip them in, and then clip the top ones in. And so yeah, that's all done. I've done both sides today. I only showed you one side. I kind of taught myself on the first side. But yeah, uh, something, something to think about doing on your van. If you've got one of these NCV3 sprint vans, I uh, hope you found that a little bit helpful and maybe a little bit interesting. I don't know what the light's right like. Light is like right now, but I just thought I'd give you a sneak peek. This is the van, this is inside. Um, so yeah, consider chucking a subscribe on the channel as I'll show you how I did this pop out and stuff like that in time to come. So as you can see, I've done a little bit of work on this van and a lot more to come, so yeah. Thanks.